let's talk about the Social Security Representative Payee Program. So, if you have a friend or a family member that is not able to take care of their own Social Security benefits, you can request to be their representative payee. But Social Security always likes to pay the person directly themselves. They, they always want to avoid a representative payee if possible. But if that person has some type of physical limitations or mental limitations that are just not able, they're not able to take care of their benefits, then a representative payee can be appointed. And in that case, if you're going to do it yourself, then you usually have to have some type of doctor's note that says this person cannot take care of their own benefits and Social Security will make you the representative payee. Social Security does not recognize power of attorney. So why is that? Well, a power of attorney is when someone has the ability, mental, physical, to say, I want this person to have my power of attorney. So that means that person can make their own decisions and do things themselves. So that's why Social Security does not recognize power of attorney, but they can do representative payee. And what will happen is they appoint you the representative payee, then whatever bank account or whatever, it'll have your name for and that person's name on there. So you have to make sure the bank recognizes that they're going to be checks coming in with a different name. If you ever want to end a representative payee relationship, then you just have to do the opposite. You have to get a note from a doctor and it has to be a relevant doctor. We've had people, I ran the third busiest social security office in the country and seen all kinds of different things. But uh, sometimes people would come in and they have mental issues and they have a doctor's note and it was from a podiatrist, a you know, foot doctor. So didn't really take that as valid evidence. So you have to have some type of doctor's note that says, yes, this person can take care of their own benefits. And we go ahead and end the payee relationship and give the money back to that particular person. However, what a lot of people don't know is if you have a representative payee and or someone tells you you have to have a representative payee and you don't have anybody available or you don't want it, Social Security cannot stop your checks. Sometimes they can stop it for a month while they're finding a representative payee for you. But if there's nobody to be a representative payee, then they can't stop it indefinitely. Maybe a month tops. So if they're demanding, you know, your proof for disability and the administrative law judge or the examiner says this person needs a payee. If there's no one to be a payee, then Social Security can't hold benefits forever. They have to release it to you no matter what. Those are your benefits and they have to release it. So the representative payee program uh, also has the payee report. And every year, if you're the representative payee for someone, let's say your children, you'll get a payee report every year and it'll say, okay, last year we sent $12,000 for your children, how did you use that money? And a lot of people always kind of stress about that. Oh, do I have to give a detailed accounting or anything? If these are your natural children or adopted children or something like that, it's very, very easy. Just, you know, fill out a you know, shelter, food, bottom of PlayStation, whatever. That's fine. Super, super easy. The payee reports are looking for some type of fraud. So for foster or, you know, some other, you know, a mental illness uh, situation where the person is not using benefits for, you know, the correct purposes, that's what those forms are looking for. So if you're the natural parents, you can put it in any bank account you want. You can make a bank account for the kids. You can put it in your family bank account that you use to pay the mortgage or the rent or the food and stuff like that. So if you're the natural parents and you have a representative pay, don't stress the pay report. Just fill it out and send it in. But everybody else, you know, you have to make sure you fill it out and the benefits are used for that purpose, that person's welfare. And if you have any other questions on the representative pay or disability or retirement survivor benefits, I do a live Q&A several times a week. Join me, subscribe, and we'll see you then.